The 6.5 is on the road here in Washington, D.C. at Google's Public Sector Summit. The talk is AI. We certainly know, all of you out there, that from a consumer basis and a business basis, what needs to happen. Now, when you get into government types of workloads and transformations, uh, security, uh, resiliency, and governance are even more important than these other markets. Uh, Google is really taking the market by storm here. I've been tracking them since the inception of actually Google Cloud, and they've really been making uh, uh, inroads here. And one of the, the key technology here is Gemini. And Gemini is the portfolio name for a set of technologies that I got a great demo of it today. And quite frankly, I, I even created my own agent, even me. Can you believe that? I can't. But to talk about this is Chris Field, CTO from Google Public Sector. Chris, welcome to the show. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, it's been a great conversation. I uh, saw your keynote that you were uh, part of, and I was really struck by, you know, I'm at this very simple interface. Uh, let's pull down what data that I want to use, and let's create an agent. Mm -hmm. Again, like I said in the in the, the lead up, even somebody like me uh, could do this. So. I want to just dive in. Gemini for government. How is it helping public sector to fulfill their missions? It's a broad question, I know, but I want to start this conversation broad. Sure. So what Gemini for government is intended to offer is we've created it to really be a front door to the rest of all of our AI services. Yeah. And so it becomes kind of this overarching way of thinking that we're going to build a user interface yeah that makes it so that every single worker can come in, it needs to be easy, right? Yeah. Folks like yourselves need to yes. be able to make an agent. Yes. But it really is intended to give access to all of the best of what Google is creating when it comes to our artificial intelligence products. And so whether it's our you know, Gemini models, all the way to yeah. our you know, image generation and video generation models, all of that just lives in this one spot that makes it easier for folks to, to be productive there. But the way that it starts to really kind of accelerate things, especially for government agencies, is that it doesn't stop at just being kind of a personal chatbot that might just make you a little bit more effective. Right. What we're trying to do with it is we're trying to make sure that A, we're connecting, as you pointed out, we're connecting into the data sources. Yes. Where is your work done today, right? Government does not change quickly. And so there are all sorts of data silos that exist and they serve their purpose. What Gemini for Government allows us to do is to connect to those, make those part of your overall experience of AI. We're going to bring AI to your data. Then the next part of it is the agentic workflows. Right. And so this is where we start to move beyond just personal productivity and talk about enterprise productivity. Because the way that AI can actually start to change how you do work is when you start to think about workflows themselves and how do you implement an, an agent that can take on like a discrete task, right? That's There's right. got to be something that it needs to do, a goal that it needs mm -hmm. to accomplish, and the data sources that it needs to go do that. And so we've got a variety of ways that you can then inject these agents into this Gemini for Government interface, so that whether it's you building your own, you know, just using like, you give it a goal, you ask right. it to build a prompt for you, you tell it what data sources it needs, and now that's there, you've got an agent all the way to your enterprise creating very custom ones that are going to have direct access into specific tools and orchestration events that can really take you from just, again, personal productivity to right. really transforming how a government agency can work. Yeah, I was really impressed that you, you even showed data sources from incumbent cloud vendors out there. I think that's a great confidence booster for people, and obviously it's valuable because people have heterogeneous uh, architectures that, that they've been leaning on for decades. Talk to me, uh, your solution seems uh, very integrated. Can you talk to me about the, the, the end user benefits of aggregated versus let's say disaggregated AI tools? Yeah, and I think what we realized at Google Cloud was that it was going to be absolutely necessary to your point of saying, this is going to be a multi-cloud solution. Right? You're going to have a hybrid environment with a whole bunch of other SaaS platforms that you're doing for your day job. Sure. You're going to have, you know, maybe you're a Microsoft Office user, and we want to make sure that you still can get the best of what Google's AI can offer, regardless of, of what your productivity platform looks like. And so what it starts to look like, and this is, this is really important, because 
what we're finding is that if you just replace six different like SaaS applications with yeah. six different chat bots that yes. I log into each one and each one doesn't know about each other and they don't have a same same common data source or context for me, then I you know, it just becomes sprawl. It's and, called yeah, we call that swivel sharing. Right? Yes. <laughs> Between multiple like, okay, this system, I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna go over here, and absolutely uh, is a is a time sucker. Yes. And I think I think Bad for morale. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, you, you see those those folks that have like six different monitors up, and each monitor has yes. a different thing that they're responsible yeah. for. And so, it's how do you start to to lower the amount of cognitive work somebody has yeah. to do? Being like, oh wait, I go to this system when I need to answer this question, right? right? But instead, to start to say, okay, no, I've got one interface that's connecting into all of those systems yes. and gives me the ability to kind of do work in one cohesive way versus very disparate and, and kind of all over the place. There's been a lot of talk here about your accredited cloud. And can you just very simple terms for people, what's the benefit of it compared to the gov cloud that we've been using for decades? Mm -hmm. So the biggest difference for, for Google, we, we came to this conclusion that gov clouds have very specific limitations, right? So one is resiliency. You know, so you're only going to be in the very clusters that are already government specific. Yeah. And so if there is an outage or if something happens to that uh, specific cluster, there's no backup, right? There's just no way for you to, to balance that, that out into the rest of the ecosystem. Whereas the commercial clouds, you can be across the entire country, right. right? And you can make sure that regardless of if you've got a hurricane or any event that, that's affecting one region, you've got that level of resiliency that doesn't exist other places. But then the other big problem that we've seen is that your tool sets fall behind really, really yeah. quickly. Because it's not necessarily in the cloud vendor's best interest to keep that up to par with everything else that's available for the commercial use. And so, from what Google has created, we've decided we're going to take our commercial cloud and we're going to accredit it at the FedRAMP high status. Right? So what that has meant is that it takes every single commercial offering that we've got on mm -hmm. the truck and it makes it so that government customers, they don't have to say, oh, I'm getting the second rate version of all of these same services. Yeah. They're getting the same top rate, and then in today's AI world, it matters even more because you know maybe you need access to NVIDIA chips, right, to be able to run a specific AI workload. Well, great, I've got them across my entire commercial cloud. I'm not capacity constrained on that. Whereas in the Gov clouds, they're extraordinarily capacity constrained on things like GPUs. No, this makes sense. Um, I think one of the advantages that you have is the full stack, and then out of the other side of the mouth, it's hey but we're flexible. You mm -hmm. want to bring your own model, you want to bring your own agent, that's really good, good for you. Uh, can you talk about, um, uh, I mean, I think I, I, sometimes I ask questions, I know the answer, I'm an analyst, I, I need to know these things, but I really want to hear in your words, what's the benefit of having both of those modalities? Mm -hmm. So, a lot of it is that, you know, we don't think of the kind of AI transformation as being one model is going to rule them all. Yeah. Right. This is very much going to be a multi-model world for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. And so there are times where we're obviously very proud of our Gemini models. Right? Well, and you're, quite frankly, you're you're crushing it on at least the benchmarks that are out there. And I think your API calls are the fastest slope of a relevant uh, model out there. So congratulations. Oh. I, it has been, it's been a whirlwind, uh, to say the least, the last yeah. uh, couple of years. <laughs> but what it ends up becoming is, you know, we've got best in breed models, as you point out. Like, we've got best in breed models, but even inside of a best in breed, there's still really a lot of room for variance, sure. right? And so there's some models that are out there in the ecosystem that are fantastic coding models, mm -hmm. right? People love coding with the Claude models. And what's amazing about our viewpoint on this is that you can go ahead and access those cloud models through our cloud platform. Yes. It's right there and we get the moment that they Anthropic yeah. releases a new version, they're right there and available for that customer set to, to turn on and use. Yeah. And so each, you know, each rendition of these models as they continue to accelerate, there's always going to be a, a reason that you might choose one or another. And we don't want to make it so that you're kind of feeling this lock-in, right? Like so much of what software has been over the past 20 years has been, okay, make your smart choice because that's what you will be yes. experiencing for the next 10 years of your life. 
And we really want to get to a point where, look, we can we can operate against all of these different models and yeah. modalities and really give you a lot more choice. Yeah, and the way that I'm assuming the way you keep everything secure is you are managing the models and the agent through a centralized orchestrator. Yes, and a lot of that becomes important to say where the data is, is yeah. going to be where things are most important, right? And so you're yeah. able to kind of know that you have this secure foundation that you're yeah. working off of. So we talked about accreditation, and that's an important component of it, is making sure that we can validate to our government customers that we are keeping that data secure. So then every API endpoint that has access to that is going through the same zero trust environment that Google has assured to right. the government so that you have that flexibility to change from one thing to another without worrying about going through a whole new security audit because it's already been done in that first one. It almost seems too good to be true, uh, which by the way, that's a good thing, yes, right? I'll take that, it. that people will, will, will poke on that. Uh, I hear a lot of other companies claiming that they have the same thing. <laughs> I, <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I, I've heard I've heard those same claims. Okay, all right. Uh, I, I'm suspicious. Okay. You know the the thing that I don't think anyone can claim that that you see out of what yeah. Google has brought to this is that you know we talk a lot about our full stack. Yeah. And, and this is where we really have differentiation that is going to be hard for anybody else to to make a viable claim across, which is to say we have been building, because of Google's own needs, right. the world's best AI infrastructure for over a decade. It's planet scale. Absolutely. Like yeah, and, and as you look at that, like we've got, what, seven or eight applications that are, use, are used by more than two billion people each. <laughs> right. right. That requires a level of sophistication at that infrastructure level, layer that the, our public sector customers get to take advantage of. Right. right? And as you move that up into the the Google DeepMind research teams, right? That is a level of research sophistication and number of publications. You know, we invented the transformer model here at Google, right? I, yes, so, I, I reminded reminded my audience of that the last two videos I've shot here, so. Good, yes. So we're, we're all the way at that, and then just creating these agentic solutions kind of lives on top of this stack that we already have, this expertise right. across that entire thing. And so while there's other vendors that are doing Good work, right? Like there, there's interesting things that they're doing. It's very difficult to, to find yeah. anyone out there that can give that breadth of the yeah. overall portfolio. So I want to end on a high note, a FedRAMP high note. Do you like, uh, that what, was a very good point. See, see what you. I did there? Yes. No, seriously, FedRAMP high assistance in workspace and agent space. Can you talk us through that? What are the differential benefits that you're bringing to your customers related to productivity, uh, security, and even knowledge access? Yeah, so the, the big thing there, so the FedRAMP high accreditation gives us kind of that authority to go operate, right? And it's a, in a way to go and really present to agencies, you know, if you look at Workspace, this is the first time that they can really look across the entire vendor market from a productivity right. tool set and say that they have legitimate choice you know, in, in what they're going to, to have their agency workforce yeah. use. And so by adding that to their kind of portfolio of options, A, you reduce vendor lock-in, which that's always a good thing, but also the security mm -hmm. of our system is paramount. And so we've seen, you know, there have been breaches in many, many government systems over the past couple of years. And so by giving them this incredibly secure offering that is going to give them the, the best security possible, on that kind of FedRAMP accreditation so that they have that ability to go purchase it yeah. and work with it, that's huge from that perspective. And you flip over into our, our, our Gemini for government being also at that FedRAMP high level, what's important about that is that, you know, there's lots of AI vendors right mm -hmm. now. And it's very difficult to go through these accreditation processes. And it's the fact that we have been putting in the blood, sweat, and tears, sometimes literally, that is giving us this kind of ability to offer to them to say, Yes, we can give you this. And right. it's available right now. This isn't some kind of maybe in the future we'll get yeah. to that compliance perspective. No, no, no. We're there. You have the ability to start to integrate this, these tool sets today. And that's a, a huge benefit for those customers. Well, Chris, I want to thank you for the time here, understanding, better understanding Gemini uh, for the public sector. And quite frankly, helping the, uh, all of governments to fulfill their missions. By the way, that's why I love the verbiage. Missions are awesome, and that's not just a military mission. Every one of your customers has a mission, 
whether it's educating, protecting people, and everything in the, in the middle. So I'm gonna thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. This is Patrick Moorhead signing out. 6.5 is here on the road in Washington, D.C. at Google's Public Sector Summit. It's been a great show so far. Check out all of the Summit content, and also we have a lot of other Google content as well. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> oh,